Hello, everyone. I'm Eric Cox. I'm a member of the Net Capital team. Let's allow one minute for everybody to settle in. Thanks. All righty, then let's go ahead and get started. Uh, thank you so much for all the participants for joining. Uh, thank you so much to our panelists, Amon Stuppert here with Above and Beyond Studios. Um, as always, I'm gonna start off with a couple of quick housekeeping items. Um, we are here with an issuer that is actively raising capital as always. I'm gonna go ahead and add a link to that offering into the chat feature right now. There it is. Uh, you can go ahead and click that link to review the offering page and potentially invest, uh, or you can go directly to netcapital.com and search above and beyond studios, uh, or you can go to netcapital.com slash companies slash above dash beyond. Uh, of course, you can always go ahead and review that information, share that broadly, and of course, hit that invest button if you're so inclined to do so. Um, quick housekeeping, please do use the Q&A feature built into Zoom. I know there's also a chat function, but the Q&A feature makes it so much easier to track all the questions as they come in uh, and allows me to get to address more of them uh, than we would be able to otherwise. So please do ask your questions. We do want to keep this as interactive as possible, um, but please do use the Q&A feature in Zoom. All right, Amon, it's good to have you on. Why don't you go ahead and start us off by telling us a little bit about what you're building with Above and Beyond Studios. Absolutely, I appreciate everyone. Um, for joining us. Thank you, really. Thank you for your time. Uh, my name is Amon Stupar. I'm co-founder and CEO of Above and Beyond Studios. Uh, I'm here to tell you uh, about what we're doing and how we're impacting the community. Um, so what our company does is we connect online shoppers to local businesses, and we do that through a couple different tools. Uh, one of our tools is a browser extension called Shop with Freedom, and we allow people to price track items, find coupons and get deals while they're shopping online. Um, our differentiator and where we're trying to give back and help the community is we're focusing on local businesses. So there, there are couponers in the market that are helping people shop. And while they do get them deals to the big sites like Amazon and Chewy, which of course we help our shoppers there as well, we're trying to focus on local alternatives black owned brands, minority owned brands. Uh, and that's where our value add comes in. So we're finding people deals while they shop on Amazon, which is the most searched and used shopping platform in the world. And we're also providing them a, a local alternative right now, focusing specifically on Boston, but looking to grow to the major metros soon. Well, you know, we have strong ties to the Boston ecosystem. So it's always good having other Bostonians on the line here. Um, yeah. Uh, can, you, can you dig a little bit deeper, and I think thank you for that description, can you look, dig a little bit deeper into, before we get to problem, solution, market size, all that good stuff, your background, who you are, I know you also have a fantastic co-founder uh, in Stefan, so why don't you tell us a little bit about your, you and your background, and then the rest of the team. Absolutely. Um, so I started uh, my career in um, commercial real estate. Um, in the beginning, I, I interned for a few brokerage team. I worked way, my way into property and asset management um, and spent some time there. Um, my my co-founder, um, Stefan Jackson, uh, was in tech sales, spending some time at Oracle and Talent. Um, so we both uh, got to develop on the corporate side and learn more about um, the business side, like the top-down structure and kind of working um, with partner partners and, and larger partners. And what we wanted to do was turn that experience and knowledge into something that we could use and give back um, to our town and our city. Um, so I, I'm from Boston, Mass., um, originally from uh, Mattapan, 
And um, growing up, I was a part of um, some nonprofits that exposed me to some wonderful networks, um, enabled me to go um, to some prestigious high schools, went on to um, Trinity College in Hartford, Connecticut. And that was through nonprofits and programs in Boston that gave back. So one thing that we've made our mission is to continue that, continue to give back um, to the city um, and help Boston in any way we can. Um, so that's, that's kind of a little about us and our, our roots to Boston and what, why we're trying to build it here. I love that. It's actually a good time to welcome in one of our first questions um, because you are talking about the hyper-local and focus on Boston for now. Um, we can dig deeper into future milestones in a little bit, but for now, you know, what countries are you opening your program in? Do you have an idea after Boston where you plan to go from there? Yes, absolutely. Um, so uh, we have a, a couple different areas that um, we're looking to expand. Um, one is based on our current influencer network. We want to grow with them. We have about 50 influencers who started in Boston um, and they've moved on to cities such as particularly Miami, New York, and LA. So for us, that's the first area that we want to expand to. We want to follow our network and where our resources are going. So those are going to be the, the first places that we expand to. Um, and we're already starting to develop ties now. Uh, the second area is kind of following our minority focused brands. Um, so we're looking for the major metropolitans that focus on, on minority shopping, such as Atlanta, Houston, Chicago. So those are going to be kind of the next um, five to 10 cities. So, so the major metros and particularly with um, diverse um, demographics. Absolutely. Uh, that was great. Thank you very much for that first question. Please do keep them coming. We do want to keep it interactive. Um, for those who are not super familiar, you know, how, how big is this problem and what exactly is the problem that you're facing? And then let's keep that separate from the solutions that you offer and then we'll dig deep on solutions. But you know, how big is this shopping experience problem? Yeah, and so uh, the shopping market is insane. So there's about 300 um, million um, users on Amazon alone and that's just shopping there. Um, the, the markets that we're kind of attacking is the digital advertising and shopping space, um, which is a, a $500 billion market. Uh, but what we're focusing on is we're focusing on that Amazon market because that's where most of the shoppers are, particularly the people in our demographic. Um, with 300 million um, yearly shoppers there, we want to focus on really helping that Amazon experience for the user. Um, and that's through our, our price tracking. Well, I'll get to the tools later, actually. <laughs> but um, we're trying to focus on the, the Amazon customers because we see that as the place where we can help that customer as well as helping the business. So um, we get to add value on the B2C and the B2B side. So our focus right now is really building um, on top of Amazon, helping people, um, driving them to get the best deals on Amazon and also being able to provide that local alternative um, and stay true to our mission. Yeah, let's talk a little bit about that mission. I, I know you, you know, you're really proud of your roots and where you've been, where you've grown up and where you live now. Um, can you talk a little bit about the difficulties for small businesses to be able to sell their products when you do have these behemoths in the in the space? Absolutely. Um, one thing that we found, unfortunately, and was a lot more pronounced due to the effects of COVID, was that uh, local businesses don't have a digital presence at all. Some of them don't have sites. Um, if it's a certain type of business, such as a restaurant, they're operating purely off Grubhub and DoorDash, um, and there's no website presence at all. Um, so it's totally based on kind of where that algorithm and platform um, is feeding their users. Um, a lot of them, the businesses that we work with uh, don't focus their attention on social media and don't understand the importance of that, especially in today's age in terms of shopping, um, because around 70% of, of shopping purchases are influenced by social media. And that's something that we really try to preach to local businesses. So uh, what we do is we come in and we make sure one, we try to help them um, set up their, their website presence. Um, two, also make sure they have a good social media presence and those two are linking back um, with each other. And then three, adding them on top of our couponing platform to make sure that all of our users have access to their deals so that we can help the business on their end with their platform, as well as building up our platform with local partners. 
And it's interesting because folks definitely express interest in supporting local, um, but they also just love the convenience of big, big, strong brands. Um, so I, I definitely, I feel like there's a disconnect there and it's tricky to address both. And, you, and you've been holding off on going into solutions. So I'm going to welcome you in to start talking about that now. So tell us a little bit about, you know, how is Above and Beyond Studios through Freedom Reigns uh, addressing these problems? Yeah, and, and that's that's actually a, a perfect segue because um, the way that we're addressing it and the tools that we're using is um, we are building off the assumption and we know that people are going to be Amazon shoppers. So our tool is really focused on that Amazon experience, improving that um, and helping the users save while they're shopping there, as well as feeding our businesses with clients. So what our tool does um, is it gives them uh, coupons to of those two sides, the bigger partners in that local brand, as well as it helps them price track. So we have a price tracking tool that allows users to price track items on Chewy, Sephora, um, Home Depot, Lowe's. We have about 30 major brands. Um, so we're really helping the shoppers save money um, in time uh, for their entire journey, um, as well as, you know, of course, stand true to that uh, above and beyond mission for local businesses. So what one of our tools um, is focused on helping the shopper in all aspects of shopping. Uh, and then another tool that we have and use is we have a TV application on Roku uh, for our influencer network. And we use that to show um, local ads for businesses um, to put up all of our influencers content for their brand deals. So what we're doing is kind of the, the full small business digital experience on TV, on the computer, with of course a mobile to come soon. Absolutely, I, I know I have my extension uh, built in and it, and it lets me know and it prices tracks, price tracks things for me. So I, it, is, it is real time, it's available. Folks should definitely go check that out. Um, more questions coming in, but I'm gonna try to kind of keep them in a way that it fits. So, um, let's let's before we get to competitive landscape let's talk a little bit about the market size we talked about it online shopping is huge covid exasperated that um let's talk a little bit about how big is the market that you plan to be able to address yes so the market that we plan to address is around 650 million in terms of um dollars uh, per year and that that, that is globally and the, the areas for that are couponing um, digital advertising uh, and the e-commerce space. Um, so what we're doing is we're going in to what we believe is the future of transactions. And to us, we see it as all digital. Um, right now, uh, the market for paper coupons is that there's about, um, I believe the number is uh, 18 billion that are printed every year and only seven of them or 7 billion of them are redeemed. Uh, well, for digital, um, there's only 10 billion that are distributed every year. And last year, that number that was redeemed also hit 7 billion. So the amount of people that are actually redeeming digital um, coupons has completely surpassed the percentage of people redeeming paper coupons. And so the markets that we see increasing are those digital couponing and the digital shopping experience. So um, we're, we think we're positioned to help on the social media side, as well as um, diving a lot deeper into that e-commerce and specifically the Amazon shopping experience, um, which is by far the biggest um, in terms of online transactions per year. You know, absolutely. And that actually tees us up really well. I think hopefully that explanation will help support, you know, what, what follows up here about the competitive landscape, but someone specifically asked, you know, what's the difference between your offerings and what Walmart provides? And so maybe you can address that and let's talk about more broadly, what are there other players in the space? Uh, what do you view as the competitive landscape? But specifically to this Walmart question, you know, what's the difference between that and what and, and some of the, the offerings that Walmart offers? Yeah, so um, what uh, most of the couponing companies do is they work with partners like that uh, to help them sell their affiliate offers. Um, so coupon will, or sorry, Walmart will of course have their um, premier deals that are only exclusive to them, um, but they'll also partner up with couponing platforms such as ourselves and use us as an affiliate to offload deals. Um, so we work with brands like that and we sell their coupons. Uh, and that's actually one of our revenue streams is getting uh, affiliate commissions off that. Um, so if you go to Walmart, they'll have coupons. We'll also be listing some of their same coupons. Um, and then 
our tool also searches the internet for other coupons that are listed from other affiliate partners that can potentially help people shop on Walmart. Um, and then to speak to the landscape, the competitive landscape, um, two of the biggest uh, competitors in the game are um, Honey, which was the first browser extension that really took off and kind of um, defined the space. Um, and then Capital One um, Shopping, which was actually um, an acquisition by Capital One of a smaller startup called Wikibuy um, that really um, moved the needle in the coupon space and proved that they weren't a duplicate of Honey. And that is exactly what we're doing as well. We, we're coming in and we've seen what they're doing and how they help with couponing, how they help with price tracking, building tools off that um, and where we're different and where we're adding value and uh, differentiating ourselves from the field is we're providing the local alternative, focusing on local and minority brands. And we're also bringing content into the space. And that's through our influencer network, um, as well as gaming. That's an aspect um, that we see as a major differentiator. Um, we're working on tools to give uh, users e-commerce awards while they game with us. Um, and that's an area that we see as a uh, puts us in a very different field as them, as well as allows for us to explore new partnerships and new opportunities um, that companies like Honey or Capital One wouldn't be able to um, without tools and content like that. No, so that's really interesting. The idea of being able to allow, um, you know, kind of to gamify the experience and then reward people engaging with the games through these discount products or, or the couponing. So it's, it's really incentivizing people to feel ownership that they've earned this uh, this discount and hopefully incentivize behavior from there. Very, very interesting. Um, more, more questions coming in, um, a little specific and then we'll get more broad, but um, are you using digital currencies? Which digital currencies are you going to accept and why? Yes, uh, so I love that question. As a crypto enthusiast, um, I'm glad someone else is uh, thinking about that. But so we are not accepting digital currencies at the moment. Um, right now, we are going to focus on doing that through our third party payment processor. Stripe is exploring. Um, they're the biggest payment processor in the online space. Um, and we use them on our site. They're exploring um, new cryptocurrency tools and transaction processes, mostly with Ethereum. Um, we're planning to, when they allow um, more stores into their beta testing program, we're planning to use them and Ethereum uh, as our coin and method of transfers. Um, but however, we're not going to build that ourselves. We're, we're going to wait for Stripe to kind of roll that out more and build on top of their platform. I think that makes a lot of sense and a uh, good timing for that. Good time for that question with the Ethereum merge just being completed. So uh, more efficient, less energy uh, to be able to, 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 to do that process. So I think that's really exciting, the opportunity to explore the crypto, accepting crypto through the platform. Absolutely. Save on some gas fees with the merge too. So, Absolutely. Yeah, definitely more environmentally friendly. Very excited about that transition. Um, Fantastic. So we, you know, we still have a little bit of time, but I want I like to use this right, right in the middle, right around the middle of this programming to remind folks that we're on the line with Above and Beyond Studios. As always, they're actively raising capital on the Net Capital platform. You can go ahead and click the link that's in chat. I've just gone ahead and re-added that there. You can click that link in chat, uh, or you can go to netcapital.com and search Above and Beyond, uh, or go directly to netcapital.com slash companies slash above dash beyond. Um, that's fantastic. Cool. Let's, let's get back into the bigger, broader topics here. Let's talk about the business model. H how do you make money? Yes. Um, so right now we are making money through um, services that we provide to businesses. Uh, and we have a few different services. We have social media services that we're providing. Um, that's in the design and management space. Um, we're making money and revenue through website development and app development. Um, a lot of our clients don't have these platforms yet. So of course, while the main reason we're reaching out to them is to get them on our platform, we're also helping them build their platforms as well. Uh, then we also provide digital marketing services. Um, we do advertising um, on the digital platforms such as Google, YouTube, um, Facebook, and IG ads for clients. Um, so we've, we've been helping clients with all their digital marketing and developing services. And right now we're building out 
um, our browser extension and our website to include a business dashboard. And what we're gonna be exploring next year is a business subscription service um, where uh, businesses are allowed to um, purchase um, a subscription and a listing in our store and we'll provide them um, feedback, data, and all the tools more in an, in an automated process. Um, so right now it's more helping the businesses with all the services we can provide online um, while we build out our e-commerce platform. That is great. That's great. All sorts of, I think diverse revenue streams is usually pretty important to folks. Um, and I think that makes a ton of sense. Um, I want to talk about an additional revenue stream that you that you've alluded to on your offering page, but before I get to the future, and we already started peeking into the backfield, and I know that could be dangerous. Let's talk about where you where you've come from so far. Can you tell us a little bit about some of your progress today and some of those successes you've been able to accomplish? Congratulations on all of them so far, by the way. Absolutely, thank you very much. Um, so we have gotten our browser extension directory to host over 300 stores um, locally in Boston. And we also have 100 uh, affiliate partners that are online local brands um, located in the major metro areas we're expanding to next. Um, so that's how our e-commerce platform has grown. Um, our influencer uh, network has grown to 50 people and we reached um, 1,300 downloads on our Roku TV application. So we're still building out our, our TV and our advertising platform there. Um, and so that's our e-commerce platform. That's our influencer platform. And um, now we are moving on to updating our browser extension uh, because our, our next goal is to revamp the browser extension and start increasing and moving all of our users from TV and from social media onto our browser platform to help them save on Amazon and shop locally. So that actually kind of uh, illustrates some of the customer acquisition strategy to date, but let's do a let's double click on that for a little bit. What do you view as your kind of major customer acquisition strategies? Are there specific places that you're able to get these uh, businesses online? And then ultimately, you know, you, you got to get the businesses online and then also the consumers. So a little bit of a marketplace issue here. Can you talk a little bit about acquiring customers on both sides? Absolutely. Yes. The old fashioned double sided marketplace. Yeah. So um, what we're doing uh, for businesses is we're focusing on um, areas uh, where businesses populate together, such as expos, um, such as um, we're doing online webinars or going into spaces where multiple businesses are meeting together um, so that we can reach them, um, reach multiple at once and kind of uh, speed up of the process of finding more businesses and getting referrals because a lot of our businesses is based on referrals. Um, so even when we find a client who maybe can't afford it, they know a few brands who could use some of our services um, due to us providing a, a vast amount of services from social media to website development. So we try to focus in on um, groups and areas where multiple businesses are located in one location. Uh, from the user side, we've been focusing on college campuses. Um, so we've been also going to events on college campuses. Um, we've been doing speaking events at college. We recently did one at Suffolk University. Um, we've done a couple at Northeastern um, and we're in talks with a bunch of other colleges around the local Boston area. So we're using um, the college campuses uh, to drive awareness, to spread the freedom message, spread deals, um, get signed up users, get emails. Um, so right now we're, we're focusing on larger gatherings um, and college and um, younger focused areas. And, and I know when you have a, a youth demographic then content is king, right? And so mm -hmm. I think that's part of the Above and Beyond Studios narrative. You have some yeah. great team members on the online with, re, with titles like producer, um, and, um, and video editor, producer, can you talk a little bit about how important that, that content creation element of Above and Beyond Studios is for customer acquisition? Yes, content is massive. Social media is about as important at your website um, to the younger generation. So yeah, as you said, we have a, a lot of media um, personnel on our team. We have two producers, um, a video editor, and we have a few influencer partners who produce content from us um, promoting local businesses, uh, sticking with our, our local messaging, as well as promoting other local platforms uh, as well. So 
Um, we definitely focus a lot on creating content for businesses. Um, video content has um, shown the greatest increase in terms of um, getting feedback from businesses, clients, users. Um, so that's definitely something that we preach to our clients, um, as well as focusing on um, our outreach and um, using that to show your message um, as opposed to kind of text and images. Um, so video is definitely the future and something that we use to get the freedom message out there. No, I think that's great. And, and being able to support entrepreneurs and small businesses in that capacity is critical. Um, very, very difficult. Not a lot of folks understand how to get into the space, even if they wanted to. And so being able to provide the support to be able to onboard onto the platform, I think makes a lot of sense. Um, let's talk a little bit about defensibility and intellectual property. Now we're talking about software, uh, so it's already always a little bit tricky. Um, what, what does your intellectual property strategy look like? Any, any IP in your portfolio so far? Yeah, so um, our IP right now is uh, a few um, APIs, um, game of, gamification APIs, gamification and shopping um, combinations that we developed um, for our mobile app and our web platforms. Uh, and we also have a, a few trademarks for our different platforms, for our, our TV platform, our shopping platform, uh, and a few other programs that we have under the Freedom Umbrella. Uh, so right now, um, our IP is mainly focused on our gamification tools and um, our shopping tools, our, like our coupon scraper um, that, that locates and finds deals online. And uh, we are patent pending for our gamification tool. Um, so right now, um, our IP is mainly in trademarks and we are definitely um, looking to grow our API collection and building tools that can help automate all of the, the shopping features that we want to add. Yeah, the API tie-ins are critical right now and people are very comfortable with those. And I think partnering with big companies in terms of the transaction engines like Stripe lends a lot of legitimacy to the process. Um, there is experience right now with platforms that are purely uh, purely just that couponing aggregator level, right? Just trying to find those, bring them to you, give you that coupon code and use, I think probably affiliate marketing or referral partnerships like that. This is so much bigger and broader than that, but how big of your revenue model do you think it is that the coupon scrape component of your business? Yeah, we see that as the, the major driver of um, growth um, and, and the, the scalable side of the revenue platform. Um, the, the service side is kind of based on the team members that you have. Um, and we've built a pretty big team, um, 10 um, full-time members, about 20 part-time members. So uh, our team has been able to handle the service side, but um, to, to your point exactly, that, that automation uh, that you're able to do and the scalability um, from that is completely different um, when it comes to the couponing side. Um, that's where we're building our business dashboard so we can onboard businesses, let them put in their products, their coupons, and, and allow businesses to do the whole process without us. So our users are getting more deals, better deals, um, and increasing our, our marketplace size. I think, I love that. I think uh, there's, a, there's probably a, a frustration that lives in certain customers where you get there, you, you check a coupon, it's expired or irrelevant. You check a coupon, it's expired or irrelevant. Yeah. Any, any, any pieces in place to make that not such a terrible experience? Yeah, absolutely. That's that's a very key thing. Uh, one feature we had, um, we we always have a, a report button, and we have uh, it, it has real time uh, effects, and our team sorts through them. Uh, we that was something that we we did. We had to do we did a, a twice daily check in, um, one at noon and and one around six and seven when most of our users were shopping, um, just uploading and updating our coupons. So I think finding uh, tools and adding other ways um, for the customer to tell you about those issues um, and it increases your, your ability and your response time in terms of servicing them. So uh, we had a, a report feature, we had a message feature, and, and we're always looking for ways to speak to the customer and make sure that we can provide the best experience possible. Yeah, I'm curious. I'd love for attendees, if you're, if you're real time right here, it'll hop into chat. Tell me how many coupons do you check before you give up? I know my number in my head, but I'm curious. Like, and I guess it varies depending on the value of the product, but on average, how many coupons before you just, you just hand, hand, hang up, hang up and, and, and pay full price? 
Um, but I really do. I think that I, I loved that feature when we discussed it. I think that's a really critical piece of the puzzle because it does, you know, when, when you go through a handful of them, the next time you're shopping, ready to make a purchase, you start to wonder if you should even spend that time at all. And I, and I think it's, it's a worthwhile endeavor, the hard work that your team's doing to make sure that the, that the coupons are actually <laughs> functioning. Absolutely. I think uh, like most companies, the most important piece of the puzzle is your team. And then we talked about uh, a couple of team members, but there are more behind the scenes. And I'd love to just give each of them a little bit of time. I think you've been able to do a phenomenal job um, adding team members. Can you tell us a little bit about Ty Holland and what, how, what he brings to the table from his technology background? Yes, absolutely. Um, Ty is a huge piece of the puzzle. Um, so Ty is our CTO and he is our API developer, our head of engineering. Um, and he leads that team and all of those facets. And he's been able uh, to help us move to a, a tech stack that's scalable, um, create platforms that work um, cross-functionally. So we've been able to use all of our APIs and code, not only on our website, on our browser extension, but also for the mobile platform that we're building. Um, so he's, he's really helped us um, centralize the, the tech stack, clean it up um, and help us set ourselves up. So um, as we grow, uh, we don't experience too many um, growing pains and we're able to kind of handle the stress that comes with adding more users and adding more businesses onto the platform. And I know he had some experience with some recognized names and brands. Um, I'm not sure you want to share any details around what what were kind of his pedigree. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, he he got his start working for a few e-commerce and auctioning sites. Um, he then moved on to work at Whoop um, for a little, and they were a company that hit unicorn stats when he was there. So he was able to experience that rise with them. I think he started when they were around 80 people, and by the time that he left, they're around 250. Um, so he got to kind of grow with the company. Um, he was able to work there for a little. He then moved on um, to uh, another Boston um, startup called BusRight um, that's working on some automation and transportation tools. Um, and now um, he's working at uh, an NFT company called Sweet. And or actually, he since left there, but he was working at an NFT company called Sweet, um, helping us build our cryptocurrency pedigree. Um, resources and tools. So that was good for the team to be able to learn more and, and deeper there. Uh, and then um, he he left to uh, work at a, a health tech company. So now he's there and um, we're able to kind of use what he's learned in, in the crypto space, um, as well as in the unicorn um, scaling space and kind of use all of that knowledge and, and experience to grow our engineering team. And that's a great way to put it because I know you at your core are a technologist as well. Um, I'm not sure if folks realize this, but this is an operator CEO who also is a builder. And so a lot of your experience, you know, the early brick laying was, was largely done by you, if I, if I remember that correctly. Yes, I, I developed all of our, our, version, our version one applications from our TV apps uh, on Roku, Amazon, and LG TV to our Chrome and Mozilla Firefox extension. Um, so those... Those were um, some amazing experiences and I really enjoyed um, leading the product. And it was great to be able to add him, uh, to add more of that technical expertise. So we we're able to kind of tag team from a product and from a, a tech standpoint. Absolute renaissance man right here, team. Enjoy, enjoy this time together. Keep those questions coming. Uh, it's a great opportunity. Um, we talked about crypto a little bit earlier and crypto is so integral to the way that you guys plan to grow that you actually have a head of group crypto in Albert Long. Can you tell us a little bit about what he brings to the team? Yes, absolutely. Um, he is a um, 30 plus year software vet, started in the data engineering side and moved over to the software creation side. Um, he's spent some time at some major companies um, he spent some time at Zipcar, a leading their mobile engineering teams, and he's also um, deep in the crypto space. Um, he is a uh, definitely leading in altcoins, and now he's been growing up in, in the Bitcoin space as well. And so what he brings is that crypto knowledge, um, crypto expertise, um, creating um, partnerships for us we, right now. We're, we're trying to work with some crypto partners um, so that we can help our influencers kind of explore other platforms. And so uh, we've been really bouncing 
um, all of our ideas off him and growing out some projects that um, hopefully we can turn into some um, big releases. And then last team member before I want to talk about the advisory board that you've been able to assemble, but we talked about the producer element and the content creation element. And Brittany brings a lot of expertise into that space. Can you tell us a little bit about how important it's been to be able to bring that element into above and beyond? Yes, absolutely. Um, yes, yeah, so Brittany um, has had some reporter experience at Nesson at ESPN. Um, so she brings um, that know-how um, and the ability, um, the most important ability in a start to wear multiple hats. Um, from the executive producing to the directing um, to the video editing. So she brings that professionalism uh, and the ability to recruit um, partners, whether they're radio, video, as well as um, influencers to help our brands. Um, so Brittany has been one side of that and Ronnie has um, been the other. Um, Ronnie is a, a freelance producer who's been working with us um, to not only run our podcast, but to also create content for businesses um, and that's filming and video uh, and advertising content. So we've been able to use uh, both of them to really grow our, our media and our advertising platform and give businesses kind of that, that content um, as a service um, help. Which in turn benefits the above and beyond team, right? Better content, drive more sales, better transaction volume, you keep a percentage of that. I think that's a really... But it's, it's nice because it's such a symbiotic relationship because, you know, this, these are these are services that they otherwise probably wouldn't be able to do and this type of exposure that they otherwise probably wouldn't have. And so being able to help folks get that ball rolling, I think is really important. I don't want to ho hover too much, but you've been able to assemble such an important team. And whenever we survey our investors, team is the most important part. So I uh, bear with me on this, but I think it's really important to better understand the rest of the folks. Uh, let's finish it off strong with Amanda Strong, uh, the president yes. of your board. Tell us a little bit about her. She's a rock star. Yeah, she's absolutely a rock star. So she has been, um, she's a director, a, a founder of several boards, um, commercial real estate involved. Um, she's the one of the directors of asset management at MIT, um, managing their, um, I think it's about like a $2 billion real estate fund. Um, so they deploy a tremendous amount of capital every year into the Boston ecosystem. So she's able to develop relationships, partnerships, resources off that, um, get us into amazing spaces in Boston, open doors for us. Um, so she's definitely been a leader in that front and helping us uh, explore more of, of the Boston economy, um, especially that Cambridge, um, MIT and Harvard area. So that, that's really important for us, especially in the startup space um, to be in those, those tech spaces in a place like Boston. It, absolutely, um, yeah, lo love that you will be able to bring her onto the team. She, she obviously adds a ton, um, not just for legitimacy, but also in, in uh, yeah, the, the kind of being able to really leverage relationships within Boston. Um, as we're getting closer towards the end here, let's start looking towards the future. This is the part where I wanna do all sorts of disclosures. The future is uncertain, no guarantees. Well, you know, the, all of those, you know, asterisks, asterisks, asterisks. Um, but let's, let's, let's theorize a little bit about the, what the future might entail. Any ideas on exit strategy? Um, do, you, do, you, do you have a vision in mind and how the investors will ultimately get return on their investment? Yes, absolutely. Um, so one thing that we like about the couponing area is uh, the attraction that it brings from banking firms and banking companies, um, as well as media firms and media companies. Uh, most of the big couponing platforms have been acquired by banking firms. Uh, it started in, I believe it was 2018 or 2013 with Ebates um, getting bought by Rakuten. Um, and then in 2018, it was slick deals getting bought uh, by Goldman Sachs. And then it was it also in 2019, Honey getting bought by PayPal. Uh, and, and then in 2020, um, Wikibuy getting bought uh, by Capital One. So what we see is a trend of banking companies exploring these space, getting into couponing because it is, um, it's the, the piece that brings the transaction um, and makes the transaction happen. So we see ourselves as being uh, right in that space and we're helping on the business, um, the B2B side and the consumer side. Um, so I think that uh, banking companies will see that as uh, very valuable um, from an e-commerce standpoint, as well as uh, a business and um, partnership standpoint. 
Yes, we have seen quite a bit of uh, acquisition activity within the space. It feels like as soon as a company becomes large enough, they start to get scooped up by bigger players um, and, and largely from banking, as you mentioned, or fintech uh, in the example of PayPal. Um, I think that's really interesting. Um, and that's that's good enough again, future uncertain big asterisks. Uh, but that's one, one of the opportunities would be wow. exit by acquisition. Yes. Do you think banking partners are, would even be find this even slightly a potentially more attractive opportunity because it's not just large transactions through Amazon, et cetera, but also that that hyper regional element? Do you think that's something that would that that adds an element of excitement to potential acquiring parties? Absolutely, uh, especially with the trend of shopping being um, sustainable, um, eco-conscious, eco-friendly. That's our market, um, and that's the future of e-commerce. Um, so we see that as we're trending in the right direction, kind of heading where the shopping um, trend is looking towards. Um, sustainability is a big key for all of the, the major brands as well. That's something that Amazon, Walmart, and those major players are trying to change. And that's that's where we see our, our platform um, is branded. That's kind of our foundation. So that's definitely something um, that's going to be very appealing um, for, for any partners of ours, um, whether we're selling their products or um, just uh, a partnership um, in any other sense. Yeah, let's talk a little bit about that partnerships part. part. Um, you, you're one of those folks, I feel like, does not no egos, don't have to be the, the big boss in town, happy to work, play nice in the sandbox with others. Are there partners that you're really grateful to have had early and are there future partners that you'd like to see join the family, so to speak? Yes, absolutely. Um, one of the partners that we've had join early uh, is Audi Global and they help us with uh, marketing, web development. They help us with a lot of the services that we provide um, to businesses um, as well as building our platforms. So what we've been able to do uh, is find partners who are local as well. And that's something that we're really happy. They're a West Roxbury based company. So we get to keep that same Boston um, mission going. Um, other partners that we've um, been working with from the content side uh, involve Performer Radio, which was a contact brought to us by um, Brittany, our producer. Um, we've also been able to work with a few partners of our other producer, Ronnie, and um, those, those have really helped us from the content standpoint. So we've been building those content partnerships as well as those e-commerce partnerships. And they, they continue to kind of feed back and forth to each other and create a, an ecosystem. Partnerships are, 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 are key in my opinion. And uh, they say, you know, if you wanna go fast, go alone. If you wanna go far, go together. And I think you've been able to, to add some folks that are helping you go far. Um, I, you you alluded to some of these successes, but I can't let you you're too humble to not cover all of them. So I'm gonna I'm gonna cover through a couple more. I think it's important, right? Um, do, over do. over 1,300 app app downloads. Correct me if I'm ever wrong here, right? But I'm I'm, I'm confident. Um, uh, over a hundred thousand views on Roku and Amazon Fire TV. Is that right? Yes, absolutely. We just hit a 120k. Actually, I have to update that. Yes, get that. I love it. We're updating real time, folks. You're, 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 hearing, it, you're hearing it for her. Hearing it here first. Excuse me. 100, over 120,000 views uh, on the on the channel through Roku and Amazon uh, Fire TV. Um, over 300 businesses on the extension. Is, is that is that right? Yes, yes. And so we're we're trying to build out um, that directory right now. It's only Boston focused. Those are um, all Boston and some New England brands. So as we grow to the LA, to New York, um, we'll allow people to kind of toggle through the cities um, and reflect like where they are geographically and show them a local shopping experience for that location. All right. So for all the folks, all the Bostonians on the line here, you should be loving to hear this. This is exactly what the goals are when you're creating businesses that are helping support businesses in your area. You have to love to see it. Um, those are just a handful. I'm not actually going to go to the rest of them. Please do hit the link and go visit the rest of them on the offering page. But let's look to the future a little bit here. What do you think are some of the next major milestones? You already moved from 100 to 120, so that can't be it. What's what's next? Yes, absolutely. So our next goal um, is to double that views. We're, we're, we're shooting for 200K. Um, right now, it, the growth is accelerating. Um, so that's definitely something that we're looking to try to do within the next couple months, hopefully sooner. Um, and right now you said it was that, that 1300 number. Um, our next goal is to get to 10,000 across all platforms. 
Um, because that number is combined, we have TV downloads. We also have browser extension downloads. Um, so we're hoping with the combination of the two that that next goal um, get 10,000 in Boston in the local area. And I, we think that's a good start for the Boston community. Is, is there a specific download number that lets you move on to the next market or is the answer to just absolutely dominate Boston before you even look to another city? Absolutely dominate Boston before we even look. I, I, I'm telling you, I can't, you can't make this up guys. You got to feel good about this. Um, if you're, if you're, if you're in the, in the, if you're in the region, um, that, that, that's, that's really exciting future outlook. Um, I think those are really thoughtful goals and it looks like you're working towards them. Um, last couple of minutes here. And so I want to be thoughtful about time, um, but I do want to let people continue to ask questions. If you do the Q and a future is still open for a little bit longer, but we are going to start to pack up here for a little bit. You know, COVID was really, really, really tough for small businesses, large businesses alike, but especially small businesses. We saw it had a disparate impact on minority businesses as well. Um, are there additional partners or excuse me, resources that you've been able to tap into that will help you overcome that experience during COVID? And then if you do see the future of potentially more, you know, uh, uncertainty in the markets and other things like that. How do, how do you view that affecting your business as you continue to grow? You're able to survive the pandemic and grow. You know, there's more uncertainty on the horizon. What, what's your outlook on, on growth? Yeah, as far as the uncertainty goes, um, COVID was definitely very unfortunate um, and had a tremendous negative impact on the economy. Um, where we see our company positioned um, is to excel um, and to actually exceed expectations in times like that when things turn to all digital, um, because that's from what we've seen is the only thing that, that stayed alive in those situations. So um, in terms of COVID um, and how it impacted our business, we were actually, we were able to grow through it um, and because of it, um, and we see ourselves positioned very well and in situations like that, hats, may they arise again um, to, use the same blueprint that we had uh, and create a, a bigger stamp and, and use that to drive more platforms and brands digital. So um, in terms of where we see shopping going, where we see the market going, we think we're positioned really well, um, say uh, another COVID were to happen again. Um, and, uh, and then the other question was, the other piece of the question was, um, in terms of market uncertainty, do you feel like, you know, I mean, if, you know, it's uncertainty around inflation, disposable income, any thoughts about um, whether this feels like a cyclical, counter cyclical, do we feel like there's opportunities here or are there concerns here? Just broad pictures. What are your thoughts on, you know, kind of the broader Absolutely. market? Absolutely. From the, the B2C side, from the consumer side, we see this as a great point and perfect timing um, for us in the market to really grow couponing um, with uh, the, the pending uncertainty, um, a recession of wars. Um, that's a time of um, decreased spending, but increased spending using savings. Um, so we see couponing position to do exceedingly well should the markets get um, trickier, should things prices get a little steeper, um, inflation rising. We see that as a time that, that'll actually benefit us in terms of growing our users. So right now in terms of timing, um, in terms of getting businesses digital and saving people money, we see ourselves positioned very well. I, I think that's right. And the last factor I think that actually supports you as well here is that hyper local with regards to supply chain disruption. I, I feel like you, I'm not sure if you knew something was coming around the horizon when you created this company, but it feels like a perfect storm to, to shop local. Are, are, you, are you hearing people say, share that as well? Yeah, no, absolutely. And that was something I actually experienced firsthand working in commercial real estate on um, the supply chain issues. I was working on a lot of development and construction. Um, so that's absolutely something where um, it is taking two to three to four times the amount um, to ship things. Um, so yeah, local shopping is definitely going to increase, especially with um, the eco conscience um, shopping. I think people are using shopping as a tool uh, and something that they can kind of show themselves or show as a characteristic of them. So we see it as a way um, to help people who are using it as a mission, as well as just to save people money. I, I think I think that's right. Um, spending as a identity, right? Uh, what yes. you buy is who you are kind of thing. And, and buying local, supporting small businesses, supporting minority businesses, if that's who you are, then you can wear that with a badge of honor with Above and Beyond Studios. Absolutely.
last couple of minutes. Thank you so much for all the questions that came. I think that was really thoughtful. Um, nice. Let's bring us home with this. I know we started really kind of covering it with how, how you're able to kind of thrive through the pandemic, overcome supply chain disruptions. Um, why is now the perfect time uh, to go to netcapital.com and invest in above and beyond? Yes, now is the perfect time because our company is positioned for the future. We're focused on digital platforms. We're focused on saving people money. Um, if you ask 10 people if they want to save money, you'll get 11 people to say yes. So what we're doing, and we see this as an opportunity um, to help everyone and for them when they're shopping to help a business. So our double-sided marketplace helps people on both sides, our consumers getting side, I and mean, we can be proud um, that the business side of it, we're helping a small business as well. Um, so we see this as an opportunity for all sustainable investors, anyone who's mission driven um, and wants to get in on uh, a, a tech company positioned in the couponing market, uh, which is growing tremendously. We see this as uh, the perfect opportunity um, to invest in a diverse company with a, a great mission um, developing tools that are positioned for tremendous future growth. Love that. And that would be a great place to end, but I'm actually going to be one more opportunity to add something here outside of investing, which is obviously a great opportunity. And I'm going to add the link back into the chat in just a second. So don't worry about that. But other, other, is there any other call to actions, other ways that folks, if they want to say, Hey, I already invested. I want to support you even further. How else could the folks listening in support above and beyond grow? Yes. Uh, that's, that's a great um, question. So I want to drop in um, our updated site into the chat. Um, we are um, this is a, a sneak preview for everyone here. Um, we're, we're doing a very slight rebrand. Um, our platform is called Shop with Freedom. We're doing a very slight rebrand and it's now gonna be called Shop Freedom. So our website, shopfreedom.io um, isn't live yet, but it is for the net capital community. Um, so I actually wanna drop it in the chat now. And if everyone could enter their email in there so we can keep you posted on our progress, um, keep you posted on our, our newsletter. Um, we also have a, a monthly blog that goes out and um, we'll, we send out local deals um, and just keep everyone um, posted on what we're working on and how our team's expanding. Um, so if, everyone could please put their email there so we could stay in touch, keep you posted, and you could follow our journey there. Well, you heard it first here, chat. You're welcome inside scoop, shopfreedom.io. I just clicked. I obviously got my email in there right away. I'm a big <laughs> fan of what you guys are doing here, of course. Um, definitely go ahead and smash that shopfreedom.io button that he just added to the chat. Thank you so much for bringing us home there. I'm going to try to work that question in a little bit more often. I think that was a really great answer, and I'm going to give more folks an opportunity to share that. So uh, thanks for taking a risk on that with me, but I think it worked out well. Uh, we are down to the last couple of minutes here. So what I'm going to do is do some closing remarks here. Um, as always, uh, Above and Beyond is actively raising on the Net Capital platform. Uh, they've already raised several thousands with us already. They're continuing to raise. So definitely go ahead and hit the link that I just added to chat. You can also go to netcapital.com and search um, above and beyond, or you can go directly to uh, netcapital.com slash companies slash above dash beyond. You can review the offering page, learn more. And if you're so inclined, you can hit the invest button and invest. Um, as always, as well, this has been recorded and will be uploaded to the Net Capital YouTube account. I'm going ahead and adding a link to that into the chat right now as well. There it is. Uh, so you can click that, catch anything that you might've missed. And of course, share it with someone that you think might be interested in learning more. Um, this is all about supporting each other, spreading the word, building community. Uh, that's what we're here, what we're, we're all about here on Net Capital. So go ahead and click that link, review anything that you might've missed and share it broadly. Um, with all that being said, I'd love to thank all the attendees who came in. Thank you for your thoughtful questions, engaging with the q and I thought that was fantastic. Of course, I have to thank my man Amon here for coming on, sharing with us about what you're building with Above and Beyond Studios. Always a pleasure hanging out with you, brother. Absolutely appreciate it. Thank you for having me here. We're humbled to be in this community. Um, so glad for the growth that Net Capital's had, and we're, we're glad that you guys are working with us. This is an amazing partnership. So thank you for having us here, and thank you for showing us the community.
Oh, no, thank you. I know I speak for the rest of the Net Capital team. It's been a pleasure working with you. All right. Thank you so much. We're at the, we're at the top of the hour. Uh, thank you so much, attendees. I'm on. Always a pleasure. Go ahead and hit the link to review anything you missed and share that YouTube link. Um, appreciate you all. See you next time.